Hello guys and welcome to this Volks Wizard video and it's a video I've been looking forward to making for about nine months because back in June 2018 thanks to Joe Knight at TL Derby Volkswagen Burton on Trent I was lucky enough to drive a brand new Polo GTI and compare it with my own up GTI and whilst I was really impressed with the Polo I just thought it wasn't really a fair rival for the up GTI because it was a lot more expensive a lot more complicated and a lot bigger but what it did make me realise was that the previous generation Polo GTI, the 6C one with a 1.8 TSI engine, would be a closer rival. And it's taken me all that time to get one so I can compare it with an up GTI. Now this, as you can probably tell, is not my up GTI. This one's for sale, it's a five door, but it's a good example. And both these cars would roughly be about 12,000 pounds now. So if you had a year old up GTI with about 8,000 miles, that would be 12,000 pounds. If you had a four year old, Polo GTI with about 30,000 miles, that would be £12,000 and, and I've sold both within the last couple of weeks so these are very current prices and very realistic comparisons. So without any further ado, let's have a closer look at the 6C Polo GTI. Now regular viewers to this channel may recognise this car from the end of the father and son GTI collection video because the dad was going to trade it in for his Golf GTI but I paid a bit more and that's why it's here today. Now I've never bought one of these before so it is new to me but I'll give you a walk around and hopefully I won't say too much out of turn. So just to recap this is the not the current generation but the previous generation Polo GTI ran from 2015 to 2018 and has got a 1.8 TSI engine with about 189 horsepower. You could have it with DSG but they gave you the option of having it manual which they didn't do with the previous car the 6R one that looks pretty similar you had to have DSG and you had to have the 1.4 TSI twin charger engine in that car which was a lot of complexity under the bonnet that not many people actually wanted particularly when they were out of warranty so when this came out in 2015 it was a breath of fresh air because we were back to the traditional manual gearbox and a nice big reliable proven in this case engine so yeah I like these a lot and also you can have a three door you can't have that on the new model the 2018 on model so this is yeah a bit of a, a special period for polo gti production only three years of it so if you want one get one while you can this car i'm pretty sure is already sold so i'm not trying to sell these to you so yeah it looks like a 6r metalwork is all the same a few little tweaks here and there we've got some nicer headlights with a red stripe going into the light and going actually up the side of the, the reflector bit probably can't see in this light but we've got led daytime running lights that go into this bit here cornering lights and fog lights a nice little spat here that's not painted so if you scuff it it's not the end of the world nice big air dam there's a radiator probably an intercooler in there that's blocked off uh, as is that so yeah all the cooling is just done in the middle there and here so a honeycomb grill a great looking car it's not particularly low and wide it definitely looks less stocky than a mark 7 golf and it seems to sit a lot higher on off the ground than the up or the front does anyway so if you look at the splitter on there that's really it's about a third of the way down where the polo sits so this does look a top heavy car looking at it, it could do with a bit more of a splitter under there to lower it a bit so a bit like the polo a bit like the up it does look narrow and tall and it probably reflects the way it drives we'll find out shortly but it's got a proper long bonnet unlike the up so it does look a lot sleeker you look at the length of the bonnet and this is like tiny really well this is I'd say probably nearly half as long again so I've got the GTI daggers on the wings some nice 17 inch wheels with 215 40 17 tires so low profile just like the ups um, but quite a bit wider so instead of 195 on the up we've got 215 so quite a big section and it's got a lot more power so it does it does need it. Bridgestone tyres on this car, these aren't the originals but these are the original make and model of tyre this car would have had. Just a nice big thick sill extension on there which is really good. I think on my Clubsport S there was a strip higher up that left this bottom section exposed and even though it's got like this dimpled stone chip protection on it it would still get battered by stones which was really annoying. This looks a lot better, stones probably won't get above this so yeah that's good. Rear calipers not drum so we've got discs and calipers on the back which well do they work any better who knows but they do look a lot better than the up gti's drums so yeah sort of slight arch extenders there because the wheels do stick out quite a bit i was obviously running a lot more offset than the 
normal polo but it does give the car quite a nice stance just a little bit lower and it would look a lot better some people used to say this looks like a one series bmw but i don't think it looks as much like a one series bmw as the new generation car i think it's a great looking car probably a bit too much of a gap in the rear wheel arch there uh, rear treatment's quite tasteful as well nice chrome exhaust tips to them sort of diffuser that doesn't really diffuse because it's solid gti badge rockwell script apparently that's called and a nice little spoiler you open the boot like that with the volkswagen badge now what's interesting about this car is because the engine is so big they've had to put the battery in the boot it's underneath that space saver spare wheel so you lose all this sort of like the length of my hand from the boot heights it's about 25 percent loss so something to consider if you really want to carry bulky stuff nice little sticker there from when volkswagen won the world rally championship in 2014 with sebastian ogier in his polo right let's have a quick look under the bonnet because this is quite important and we'll come back to the interior in a sec okay we don't have a telescopic strut so i'll just hold it up so yeah if you open the bonnet of a golf r the engine looks pretty similar to this or a mark 7 golf gti or um yeah kind of like a mark 6 golf gti as well so it's a chain driven engine and it's the new generation of tsi the ea triple eight 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 It's pretty well proven. It's only producing 190 here, so it should be relatively uh, within its well within the um, capabilities of this engine to do high mileage as long as you give it nice regular oil changes. Right, onto the interior. Okay, so nice big buckety seats. Well, sort of, yeah. I mean, those bolsters are pretty prominent. Um, would they actually fit in an up GTI? I'm not sure. They'd probably take up a hell of a lot more room and that's maybe why they didn't do it. Nice red edge to the floor mats, which you don't get on the up GTI. And you get um, a, quite a good sill protection there. You don't get that on the Mark 7 Golfs. And you get similar on the up, but a bit smaller. Yeah, nice. Let's just get in. Okay, so we've got the lovely GTI steering wheel. I think that's pretty identical to the up GTI. It's missing a few buttons you'd get on the Golf because of its uh, adaptive cruise control. A very Mark 7 Golf infotainment screen, six and a half inches. And it's not got navigation, this one, but it's got Bluetooth and it's got uh, audio. So it's got, you can stream music to it. Manual air conditioning looks a bit clunky in the modern world, but you could probably pay extra and have climate. I know I would. I'd also love to have heated seats, which this car doesn't have. This is a basic car, so it's got no extras on it, but what do you really need? I suppose cruise would be nice and heated seats would be nice, but what with the phone and uh, audio controls here? It's not, you know, it's got probably as much as people would expect in a Polo. We've got red stitching on this leather handbrake cover, which is nice. Go through the seats. We've got red stitching on the gear gate. I don't think the FGTI has got either of those. Uh, we don't have GTI on this gear knob, which is weird. It's got this sort of weird design, but I suppose it's all right. Got some aux in, 12 volt and USB sockets there, so full complement. And unlike the up, the ambience is very different. It's very it's much more grown up. We've got a big expanse of plastic dash. This is reasonably good quality, although polos have never been brilliant. I mean, that's good quality, but the glove box looks pretty cheap. But where the up GTI makes its GTI-ness from this, the inlay on the dash, this does it with a much more subtle way. So with the, with the stitching and the gear knob and the steering wheel, it's not overly different to a standard car. I'm pretty sure these door handles are plastic, which is really weird, because I'm pretty sure the ones on the up are metal. And so no doubt this bit of silver here is plastic as well. Got a black headlining. Hmm, looks a bit tacky, but you know, it's not bad. It's a very mature dash. I'm not sure about the mirror knob there, really. That's not the most ergonomic position, but there we go. Let's just have a look at that rear accommodation. Okay, so we've got release there, and that should slide forward, although we're in a bit of a slope, so to help it, try not to snag the microphone 
table like I normally do. Right, let's see if this comes back. Okay, that's in my position. I'm six foot. Right, it's cosy. Um, headroom's all right. It's not massive. And the easy entry seats do work really well. So there's loads of room to get out. It's probably more so than in a five door up because you're really struggling with the B pillar on those. And this goes back where you left it, which not all cars do. So yeah, not bad. Let's have a quick reminder of the UpGT. We're not going to focus on this car much today, but I thought you might want to see it, particularly because it's got these wonderful satin bronze wheels on it. So these are running Hankook Wintercept. Oh my God, Wintercept winter tyres. 16 inch wheels, 195 wide, so that same width as standard, but a bit more profile. And I think they look amazing, particularly on a red car. Sparco Trofeo, they're called. I think they're about £500 a set. So just to compare the calipers, and I think because this has got bigger discs, it's got a bigger caliper, but maybe the previous generation 6R, because it ran 180 horsepower, they didn't put these size discs on it. But someone somewhere said that these cars had the same calipers as a Polo. So I'm not sure which one that was. OK, let's just remind ourselves of the brilliance of the GTI cabin. So it seats, yes, OK, they're a bit flat, but judging by the lack of grip in the top from the standard tyres, you won't actually be going around corners that fast. You'll need much more support. So straight away, the 3D pixel dashboard does lift the mood. It does tell you you're in something a bit different. This is really the GTI-ness of the cabin here because there's no red stitching down here. We do have GTI on the knob just to remind you, unlike the Polo, but just a black gear gator. They've only got standard pedals, while the Polo had alloy pedals. And we've got, to be fair, we've got red and silver stitching in the grey border on the floor mats, but I just prefer a red stripe. Maybe they thought that was a bit too 1980s. Uh, this car's got climate, which does lift the cabin a bit. But because it's a red car, we've got red here as well. So this, this is why I chose mine in red, because it does make the cabin feel a lot more GTI. Um, probably in that car, I would go for white on the body, because you don't get the white inside. I don't really like white inside. Like I said in the video over a year ago, it makes it feel like you're in a Ford Transit. So yeah, not bad. Actually, I'm just going to reacquaint myself with rear accommodation because it's the first time I've had a Polo GTI since the press launch at Crick Howell in February last year. So I remember getting out the back. Was it tricky? Hmm. Getting in might be a bit tricky. Yeah, let me just check that's my driving position just to be fair. Okay, can I press the pedal all the way down? Yeah, go a bit nearer. Hmm, well considering I can't adjust the steering wheel rake that's probably about as close as I want to get okay so as I said I'm six foot tall the door opens quite well so that's quite good but you know this this is not good <laughs> no wonder they made this bit hollow because this is where your knees go jeez it's like being on a it's like being on a very budget airline and somebody reclining their seat uh, headroom is similar to the Polo, headlining is dark, it looks like it's made from recycled paper. It's amazing what you notice when you sit in the back of the car. Uh, I've got these hinge windows. I'm so old that my dad had a Vauxhall Chevette and uh, how do these actually work? Oh yeah. And it was a two-door estate car which is a bit of a weird combination um, but it had pop-out rear windows and they actually literally used to pop out, fell out. I got all the blame. So I don't really have a good relationship with pop-out windows like that. But we do have metal. Mm, I think they're metal. That definitely feels a lot thicker and a lot more metally than the door pulls on the on the Polo, which is a bit odd. So yeah, I think it's time now to go and drive the 6C Polo GTI. We will give this up GTI a little drive just to remind us what it's like and also see if it drives any differently on the 16-inch winter tyre. So without any further ado, Let's go and drive the 6C Polo GTI. Okay guys, here we are behind the wheel of the 6C Polo GTI. So I've driven the previous 6R generation and I've driven the new Polo GTI that came out 
uh, in 2018 on video, which you might have seen. So this is all new to me. I drove it back from Burton on Trent when I picked it up very, very slowly because it was very low on fuel. But I put a bit more fuel in today and I'm determined to get to the bottom of whether this car is a good rival for the Up GTI or even whether it's a rival for the Golf GTI. So let's see what it can do. First impressions are really good. It's, uh, it's a very easy car to drive, much like the Up GTI. The steering's quite light, although not quite as light as that in the Up GTI. But it, it's also a very fast car, so that's actually fourth gear. And unusually for a turbo engine, it really gets going at just over 4,000 RPM. So we're doing roughly the motorway limit on this dual carriageway, which is legal. And there's quite a bit of wind noise, but it's not excessive. The engine's quite well subdued. There's a bit of a boom. I can't really hear much in the way of tyre noise because, it, because of the wind noise. But yeah, you could do quite a bit of distance in it. The ride is quite firm, but it doesn't seem to get really annoying and crashy. So I think it's probably just about acceptable even in the UK. And the brakes, well, yeah, that's quite good. I'm not sure how they'll hold up on the track, but on the roads, they're really nice, really feelsome as well. And as usual, we're on a crappy, narrow British B road on my tests, and it feels quite a small car. It's not as compact as the up. I think my initial observation that it was somewhere between the up and the golf is probably about right. But yes, this is a very responsive engine. I mean, that's fifth gear. So yeah, make no mistake, this is a properly fast car. Totally different league to the FGTI. It's probably a good time to talk stats, actually, because this car's got 189 brake horsepower versus 112 of the up. It's got 320 newton meters of torque compared to 200 in the up. And it does 6.5 to 60 as opposed to, I think, 8.9 in the up, about two seconds more. And okay, yeah, it weighs a bit more, but those are massive jumps and the weight is probably like fractional. So it is significantly faster. Uh, we haven't got the sport pack on this car, that's a 300 quid option, so we haven't got switchable dampers, I think it's hard enough as it is, so why do you want them to be any harder? I don't know. That also makes some fake sound. Well, this car actually doesn't make any sort of noise, so it probably could do maybe with a bit of fakery. But for the price, the performance is remarkable. So just bear in mind that I think a GTI performance is low sixes and this car's sort of 6.5, so there's not a lot in it. They didn't really make the new Polo GTI much faster. They made it bigger and a bit more luxurious, a bit more tech rich. They couldn't really increase the performance without treading on the toes of the Golf. And I can, I can see why. This is a fast car. Can it go around corners though? Well, we've got this, like a few coming up now, so we should be able to tell over this crest. Will it keep its tyres? A little bit of flare, but no traction control. And we're in fourth gear, which is all you really need. You don't need to rev the you-know-what's off this engine. So will it dig in? Full throttle? Yeah, it's remarkable. Very impressive, very impressive. Bear in mind, we've only got torsion beam rear suspension, so we haven't got the expensive multi-link of the Golf. So it can't really ride the bumps as well as the Golf, but it does seem to handle there or thereabouts the same. So full throttle there, traction control did kick in there, but it wasn't like a lunge like it does in the, in the up where it cuts the power. It was relatively well managed. I had to look at the dash just to make sure the, uh, it, was, it, it was intervening. So into fifth, again we're running fifth on this road, probably even quite happy with six, that drops it down to two and a half thousand RPM and there's still a lot of go. Incredible, probably best not to be in sixth for this corner but fifth is fine. It's got so much low down grunt. So it's getting quite narrow so big trucks coming the other way on the wrong side of the road aren't as much of a problem. It's good fun. It is remarkably good fun. But I wouldn't take that corner any slower in the up GTI, so on this kind of road, I don't reckon it's got much in it. But on a more normal road, yeah, this would be much, much faster. 
like it is now. I mean, that's four. Yeah, yeah, that's that's pretty fast. I don't think I've ever actually been that fast in my GTI. So yeah, make no mistake, this is a very impressive performance car. But how does it compare to the F GTI? There's only one way to find out. Let's go and drive the Up GTI. Okay guys, so here we are behind the wheel of the Up GTI. Now I bet you never thought there'd be this much content on my channel with Up GTI since I sold mine 10 days ago, but this is the second video in that time, the first being the father and son collection video. So I hope you're enjoying it as much as I am making these videos. So here we are on the same British B road that we uh, drove the Polo GTI on. This car's standard apart from it's on 16 inch winter tyres. Um, so I think they're pretty good. We're slightly out of their comfort zone at nine and a half degrees because they tend to work better below seven degrees. But as you probably know, if you've watched this channel before, the standard tyres aren't that brilliant. Anyway, so I'm not too, I'm not having to allow too much for the fact we're on winter tyres. So people say to me, how can this be an, a GTI with just 112 horsepower? Well, this is the kind of road a GTI made its name on. And I don't think there's an awful lot faster on this road than an up GTI. So that's how this car is a proper GTI. And it's just as much fun as I remember it. I honestly don't think an R8 would be faster, especially if you take the width into account. No, I'm looking at the speedo and, well, I can't tell you what I'm doing. Go fourth gear. I'm not sure whether it's the tyres or whether it's a five door and the suspension is just a little bit nicer, but this is big fun. Hmm. It says a lot about the original tyres that these winter tyres actually feel more confidence inspiring. Okay, we're not dealing with light for light because we're running a higher profile tyre on a smaller wheel, but nice. Now this one does cause traction control. Yes, and it's on, flashing away. Well, how does it feel compared to the Polo? It's definitely a bit softer, so it's, it's riding this road a little bit nicer. I think because it's lighter they can make the shocks a bit softer but is it it's just so nice and you can use so much throttle so much of the time and you just know you've got a bit in reserve if lunatics come round on the wrong side of the road so if we were in anything wider that would have been a real bad accident but uh, no we're in a nice small car and it handled it well so yeah, is it more fun? Yeah, I genuinely think it is more fun within the speed limit than the Polo GTI. The Polo GTI suffers from the usual thing of a fast modern car in that you have to drive it ridiculously fast to get a thrill of driving from it. And ultimately you don't get anywhere any quicker because you'll end up behind a Honda Jazz soon after and the up GTI driver will catch you up having stayed within the law and had just as much if not more fun. So that's, that's the forte of the up GTI. As an everyday car, the Polo GTI is probably a little bit easier to live with. It's a bit bigger, a bit more refined, but not massively so actually. And it's probably not as good on fuel, but it's still going to be quite good. I think they're both brilliant cars. I mean, the Polo GTI was a lot more expensive when it was new, and you can tell because the fit and finish and quality is a lot better, but not massively so. And it still does emphasize that this is a particularly good value car. And for my own choice, with my own weird criteria, this is still the winner. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this Volks Wizard video. If you have, please give it a thumbs up. Please comment, please subscribe, and I'll see you for the next one, which may even be up GTI related very soon.